What's up, guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today, we're going to be reacting to the once abandoned cemetery, Nunhead Explored. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Nunhead Cemetery is one of the magnificent seven cemeteries that are in the London area or that surround the L London. Um, I've already checked out two of these cemeteries, uh, Highgate and uh, Brom West, Brom West Brompton. That's what the other one was. Um, and they were beautiful. And so I'm expecting this one to be as well. If I'm not mistaken, this is the second largest of those seven cemeteries. And um, supposedly this one was abandoned at one point, and now it's it's being cleaned up or something. I'm not really sure. Hopefully it'll go into a little bit of the history about that in this uh, video. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and uh, check this out. Uh, Nunhead Cemetery in London. Along with Highgate and others, the lesser known All Saints Cemetery was consecrated in 1840. All Saints Cemetery, Nunhead, All Saints. Okay. Before the population boom of the Industrial Revolution, most Londoners were buried in small parish churchyards, which were quickly becoming overcrowded. Wow. Inspired by the larger cemeteries of Paris, That's beautiful. efforts were made and funds raised for the creation of the magnificent seven cemeteries of London. London Borough of Southwark. All Saints Cemetery Nunhead. Okay, so it's it's not Nunhead Cemetery, it's All Saints Cemetery Nunhead. You know, one thing I learned in the previous one, the previous cemetery video. All seven of these were built in, I believe it was eight years. That's insane. All Saints Cemetery, now known as Nunhead, is situated in the southeastern borough of the city of London, and its first grave was dug in October 1840. Although popular with the wealthy, Nunhead wasn't without its problems. Wow. Management issues, embezzlement, and local area developments all plagued the cemetery's growth. Real problems began at the time of the First World War. Large and lavish funerals fell out of favour and the cost of maintenance and groundwork increased. By the 1960s, maintenance of the site was winding down. Mm. Vegetation and scrub began to overtake and in 1969, wow. the decision was made by United Cemeteries Limited to close the cemetery. Oh man, why? I know there had be be volunteers that would have The cemetery was helped. boarded, locked and abandoned. Wow. Over the next 15 years, neglect wow. and vandalism took its toll on the Victorian marvel. The biggest loss to vandalism were Nunhead's buildings, the two gatehouses and the chapel. Why? The Anglican Chapel, which stood pride of place in the cemetery, wow. was designed by architect Thomas Little it's beautiful. and eventually fell victim to arson. Local residents with family interred campaigned for the London Borough of Southwall to take ownership of the site, which they eventually did in 1975 for the sum of £1, and in 1981 the voluntary organization, the Friends of Nunhead Cemetery, was created for conservation of what had become London's site of nature conservation. Wow. Today the cemetery is open to the public to enjoy. Its unique overgrown headstones and wildlife are popular with visitors and local dog walkers. I can imagine. The renovated mausoleum has open days to be explored and its more famous residence wow. tombs can be visited once again. That's crazy, wow. With such a history and variety of burials, the different headstones reveal their own messages. Religious and superstitious symbolism can be found all over the cemetery.
The main entrance to Nunhead has columns displaying downturned torches, a Greek symbol meaning life extinguished. Mm. Oh wow. This can also be found inside the cemetery. And on the railings you'll find an hourglass with devil and angel wings, representing the sands of time and reminds us that time waits for no one. Sure doesn't. It's true. The most common marking is IHS. Asus Hominum Salvator, Greek for Jesus, Saviour of Man, mm. first appearing on tombs in the 1760s. Another common symbol is that of clasped hands, denoting unity after death and reunification in the next life. Faith is often represented with an open Bible. Wow. Anchors can be a Christian symbol of hope. Often set among rocks, it can also be a symbol of a seafaring person, an attribute of Saint Nicholas, patron saint of seamen. The broken chain stands for the cessation of life. Hmm. Beautiful if place. lucky enough to die at an old age, you may find your grave adorned with an urn, sometimes draped with cloth. Many angels and Celtic crosses are scattered around the grounds. The angels often missing limbs from years of neglect. The lily is a symbol of purity and innocence. It was a popular funeral flower in Victorian times. Though many flowers can be found with varying meanings. Doves with olive branches stem from the story of Noah and the Great Flood. When the dove returned to the ark with an olive branch in its beak, it was a sign of God's forgiveness. And finally, the broken column, Means representing life a life cut, cut short. short. Yep, learned that in the previous cemetery video. Rest in peace, Nunhead. Well, uh, I guess his name is Kent, who made this video. Um, he did an excellent job with uh, the storyline here about uh, explaining uh, a little bit of the history of Nunhead. Um, you know, it's interesting. This is the third of the Magnificent Seven videos I've reacted to. And, you know, each of them, they give me a different, um, they feel like they have a different energy about them. They, each one feels, um, gives you a different vibe, so to speak. Um, this one was a very, I don't even really know how to explain it, but it was just a very, low 
key energy to this one. Uh, I think maybe because it's kind of, it's, you know, while I do love the idea of these kind of cemeteries that have some overgrowth areas, this was kind of sad. I mean, because it's such a beautiful place and just they just let it go. I'm, I'm glad they've, um, you know, they've, they've started bringing it back to life. That's good. But it's, it's just so sad that um, people, there's people out there that go and desecrate beautiful places like this. You know, the, the graves, obviously, that's horrible when people desecrate graves. But, you know, also just desecrating beautiful structures uh, like, you know, like the, uh, what do you call it? Was it a church in there? I don't remember what that was. Where was it? Uh, I think it was towards the front of the thing here. Where was it? Was that it right there? No, that's the mausoleum. That's so cool you can go in there. Oh, here it is. Do you call this a church? Is that a church? Um, it looks like a church to me or some sort of a, a spiritual structure. Uh, we'll just call it a church. But who would set fire to something like that? Why? You know, I, 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 I can't imagine anybody I know being like wanting to go and do that. So, you know, when I hear about things, people desecrating and destroying beautiful places like that, I just can't understand who those people are. It just doesn't even register to me. There are people out there that want to see beautiful places like that destroyed. I, I don't get it. You know, you know, it this reminds me of something. Um I remember my uh there was this old abandoned cemetery um in the uh city up up the road from me. It was about uh, about 10, 15 miles from where I lived. Um, and it, it was nothing beautiful like like a cemetery like this, but it was it was actually older cemeteries. These cemeteries had graves from the early 1700s, but they were completely abandoned, mainly because uh, at first the cemetery started with these old, um, you know, graves from, I don't remember what, what they were from, but then gradually it was a mill town. And so these graves were given to the families of the mill workers, uh, you know, in the early 1800s and so forth. But um, eventually, I guess, you know, the mill closed down, the families died out, and just the cemetery just, you know, was all grown up. Um, my grandma, and my mom, and me, we um, we would go every summer and we'd start cleaning up that cemetery. We got it looking pretty good over a few summers. Um, but... I love that. I love the experience of bringing back to life this abandoned place. And it reminds me of this a little bit that, you know, this is definitely something I would do. I would be one of these friends of Nunhead. But I noticed that there was friends of Highgate, there's friends of Brompton, there's friends of Nun Nunhead. I'm guessing the the other cemeteries have the friends of whatever those cemeteries are called as well. Um, I look forward to checking those out. This one, I... This is the third third one I would I've checked out, and it's the third one I would definitely visit. It, they all three had different vibes, different energy, like I was saying, and um, this one feels more wild to me. I, you know, what do you say about it? It's, it's beautiful nature, uh, so interesting the history, and uh, just be a it'd be an amazing place to explore. Um, and I hope they continue uh, taking care of it, and I hope it doesn't go back abandoned again because. We need to keep places like this going for the future because people need to be able to see this history. People need to be able to experience it. People need to be able to explore these beautiful places. And on top of just because it's a cemetery, it's just great to have these green spaces around a city like London, So, which I'm sure you guys know. Anyways, guys, I'm just rambling. Um, you know, I don't really know what else to say about this place except it just looks beautiful and uh it's um, definitely a place I'd like to check out at some point. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments and suggestions about this video or about other videos uh, related to this that you think I would uh, enjoy checking out. Maybe other cemetery from other places, other old cemeteries from other areas in the British Isles. Whether that's, you know, England, Wales, Scotland, the Isle of Man or Ireland, um, doesn't matter. Anywhere in the British Isles, I'd love to check out the cemeteries and 
Something else I'm interested in, guys, that I specifically, because Halloween's coming up, I kind of want to check out some of the, I don't know if you want to call it spooky tales of the British Isles, uh, you know, or like, you know, what are some good, um, you know, some old ancient traditions that were kind of spooky or, uh, I don't know, you get what I'm saying. Uh, it's just some interesting things like that. Um, be interesting to check out that stuff, considering we're near Halloween, it's just that kind of that kind of energy is going around, you know? So anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, please click that like button and don't forget to click that subscribe button to join me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.